familiar with acute, right, obtuse, straight, and reflex angles. But what does it look like when we start using those angles in different combinations? Let's start with congruent angles. Congruent angles are two or more angles that have an equal measure. So here, our right angles would be congruent because angle one and angle two both measure 90 degrees. We could write this out symbolically to say that the measure of angle one is congruent to the measure of angle two. The symbol for congruent is an equal sign with a similar sign over it. There are several different ways to have congruent angles. One way is through corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are congruent angles that have the same relative position. So here in our squares, angle one and angle two would be corresponding angles because they both measure 90 degrees and they're both in the bottom left hand corner of our square. When we have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, several sets of corresponding angles are formed. Angle one and angle five would be corresponding because they're both in the top left corner. Angle three and angle seven because they're both in the bottom left. On the other side, angle two and angle six are corresponding angles because they're both in the top right and angle four and angle eight are corresponding because they're both in the bottom right. Keeping our parallel lines and transversal, we have several other sets of congruent angles. One set would be alternate interior angles. Alternate interior angles are angles that are on opposite sides of the transversal and fall within our parallel lines. So angle three and angle six would be one set of alternate interior angles, and angle four and angle five would be our other set of alternate interior angles. In addition to those, we also have alternate exterior angles. Alternate exterior angles would still fall on opposite sides of the transversal, but now they're gonna fall outside our parallel lines. So angle one and angle eight would be one set of alternate exterior angles, and angle two and angle seven would be our other set of alternate exterior angles. Vertical angles would be another set of congruent angles. Vertical angles are angles that are not adjacent to each other and formed by two intersecting lines. So here with our two intersecting lines, one pair of vertical angles would be angle one and angle two, and our other pair of congruent vertical angles would be angle three and angle four. If we go back to our two parallel lines cut by a transversal, we would have four sets of vertical angles. On the top line, angle one and angle four, and angle two and angle three, and then on the bottom line, our other sets of vertical angles would be angle five and angle eight, and angle six and angle seven. We also have types of angles that are not congruent. While these angles don't have the same measure, they still have a relationship between the angles. One of these relationships is with adjacent angles. Adjacent angles are two angles that have a shared vertex and a shared edge, but no common interior points. In both complementary and supplementary angles, we frequently see adjacent angles because they have that shared vertex and that shared edge. Another place we see adjacent angles is when we look at a linear pair. A linear pair of angles is formed by two adjacent angles that form a straight line. So here, along this line, we would have a linear pair of one and four, and then another linear pair of two and three. If we went along this line, our linear pair would consist of one and three, and then down here, four and two. Linear pairs are another way to look at supplementary angles. Non-congruent angles are also formed by our two parallel lines cut by a transversal. One way is through same side interior angles. Same side interior angles occur on the same side of the transversal and they're found inside our parallel lines. One set of same side interior angles would be angle three and angle five. Our other set would be angle four and angle six. Our two parallel lines cut by a transversal also form same side exterior angles. Same side exterior angles are gonna be on the same side of the transversal, but now they're gonna be outside our parallel lines. One set of same side exterior angles would be angles one and angle seven, and our other set would be angles two and angle eight. Now that we know which angles have a relationship between them, we can now use those relationships to find missing angle measures without having to take out a protractor and actually measure them.